All right, everyone, welcome back. We're gonna continue with chapter 21. This is gonna be quick, anaphylaxis is pretty simple. All right, so, so this will be great, anaphylaxis. So we'll talk about the pathophysiology of anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis is a full body allergic reaction. So some of you may have allergies, uh, maybe you have food allergies, or maybe you've like, touched um, some poison ivy before, or you've had a weird soap reaction, and those are, are, are usually local allergic responses. And how, how that happens is it kind of primes your immune system to release a chemical mediator uh, titled histamine, and that is what causes local vasodilation because we want it's just local vasodilation because we want more immune cells to go to that site of that infection of that um, allergen. We we get um, and that's what kind of makes that histamine is also what causes the swelling, the redness, and then a kind of localized itchiness reaction. That itchiness is from histamine. So maybe you have seasonal allergies and you inhale pollen and you kind of get itchy, watery eyes and sneezing, but your whole body isn't um, dying from the pollen, although you might feel like it. So an allergen is a an, an object that your body thinks is harmful that's really not. Pollen isn't going to kill you, but your body kind of thinks it would kill you, and so it amounts an immune reaction to that pollen. That's an allergen. Um compared to an antigen, which is a protein or a molecule that is indicative of an underlying infection where you do want an immune response to, um, to respond to that antigen. So and that's an antigen versus an allergen. So these are two different things. An antibody is a protein your body makes directed at allergens and antigens for the long-term response. So when you get a vaccine, you generate antibodies so that if you were to be exposed to that antigen later, you have the antibodies necessary to respond to that antigen. An allergic reaction just refers to the processes that occur in your body specific to the allergen that is exposed to you, that you are exposed to. But then anaphylaxis is kind of this tail end of extreme allergic reactions that's systemic. So let's say you're allergic to nickel or something like that. You touch nickel, you get itchy hand. Now anaphylaxis would be, oh, I get stung by a bee, but instead of like a localized bee sting reaction, I get a full body, I almost die reaction. So that's the extreme exaggerated um, response. So allergic reaction is an abnormal exaggerated response by the immune system. And this person has a fairly common local skin. Um, they have urticaria, which is also called hives. You can see this is kind of a raised plaque surrounded by erythema, redness. This is probably itchy, and then there's multiple spots of it. All right, so this is just a skin manifestation of an allergic reaction. So you don't need to memorize anything on here, but basically it's showing um, a certain type of cell you have in your body. A B cell makes antibodies to these antigens and then you have cells called basophils or mast cells in your tissues that when are exposed to the antigen again after you've made you've been pre-sensitized you've been sensitized to that an an allergen that makes these basophils release histamine and histamine increases the redness the swelling the permeability of capillaries and that kind of makes you uh, itchy so histamine is a key mediator that you need to know all right, it dilates blood vessels, leakage fluid, leakage of fluid, swelling in your mouth and your lungs. That's called angioedema, whereas just like capillaries would be normal edema. This is angioedema, and then skin would just be normal edema. That increased blood supply causes that uh, the rash and the flushing, that red, warm, raised appearance. And then if you have a severe, but if it's localized, we're not worried about it. However, the swelling could be localized to the mouth. That, that could be concerning for airway obstruction, like Strider. But if, you're full, if your whole body is dilating in response to that allergen, um, um, a, a correlate would be, um, do you remember about septic shock and distributive shock? I mean, both anaphylaxis and sepsis are distributive shock. And distributive shock involves blood vessel dilation. Now, if every blood vessel dilates without any change in blood volume, your blood pressure will tank. 
and then we don't perfuse our organs. So severe vessel dilation and anaphylaxis, which is whole body blood pressure drop from vasodilation, um, that can be life-threatening. So histamine can cause, this is angioedema right here, those thick lips. This is periorbital edema. This is to show urticaria or hives, kind of a raised, irregular, patchy distribution with surrounding erythema. This is an example of that. So uh, ultimately, the, 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 how this uh, develops over time is your body is sensitized to an allergen. So the first time you're exposed to the allergen, you don't mount a response to it. Um, you kind of develop some antibodies, but you don't develop an allergic response. So that becomes that's called being sensitized um, on that first exposure. You make a bunch of antibodies to that allergen, and then the subsequent exposures, you already have those antibodies floating around, and that causes the release of these mediators like histamine that can cause a secondary exposure. Um, on, on the secondary exposure, can cause an anaphylactic reaction. All right. Now, this is, this is high yield, clinically high yield, because subsequent allergy exposures result in worsening um, reactions. So someone who gets stung by a bee, maybe the first time they were sensitized, the second time they got stung by a bee, maybe they have a local reaction, the third time they had anaphylaxis that was fixed with epi, maybe the fourth time they have anaphylaxis fixed with epi, but the anaphylaxis is so bad they need multiple doses of EpiPens. So it's important when you do a sample history to determine how many times this has happened because the more this process happens, the worse the reaction is. All right, so that's super, that's clinically high yield. I'm not sure you'd be tested on that, but that's important to understand because your body is just like you want a stronger immune response to a virus or a bacteria. I mean, that's a good thing because we can protect our body, but your body is mistaking allergens for those pathogenic problem um, things when it really isn't. And so uh, that, that's just important to know. Um, anaphylactoid just refers to similar to an anaphylactic reaction. Um, this doesn't require sensitization. The antigen itself causes the release of uh, histamine, but the treatment is the same. Removing the allergen, consider uh, epinephrine if they're shocky. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not really, it, 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 usually anaphylactoid reactions are like drug induced. Um, it, th these are not super common um, compared to an allergen causing um, a response of mediators. So this is where the antigen itself releases the mediators. I would say this is lower yield, lower yield. You might get a question on it to compare contrast to anaphylaxis, um, but this Whatever whatever enters your body is the one that is the thing that causes histamine release, which is which is atypical and it's like a fun sort of like oh, other things can cause anaphylactic reactions such as anaphylactoid um, from antigens. So medium yield, medium yield. And now let's talk about anaphylactic reactions. Actually, where your your body releases the histamine from the antibodies to those things. So frequently you'll see food allergens. Peanuts is classic. Right, you've probably heard of that. Um, there's probably seven or eight top uh, foods that cause reactions. Sesame should be on here. Tree nuts, shellfish. Um, I, I'm not sure about this, cow's milk. Um, I'm not sure where this image come from, maybe Charles Stewart. I usually you just hear people lactose intolerant. I don't think I've personally have heard of anaphylaxis to cow's milk, but we'll just believe this chart. All right, eggs, also common. Bee stings, right? Your bees and wasps. Meds, classically, people will have allergic reactions to things like um, penicillins. All right, latex. That's why all of our gloves are latex free because pe uh, some people have allergic reactions to latex. Uh, condoms from latex, I guess. Exercise. Uh, this isn't a thing. So I don't, I don't trust this chart. People don't have an anaphylactic reactions to exercise. Frequently, they'll have um, like bronchospasm, but that's not a true allergic reaction. That's not a thing. So I'm, I'm not really sure uh, what this chart is, but um, great. So here's another uh, way that you can get exposed to things. So plants, the cat could scratch you. You could breathe in pollen. You could touch latex in plants. Injection stung by a bee. You can ingest things or inhale things. It's saying most common. 
I reckon is saying bee sting. I don't, I don't know if that's technically true because I would think ingestion of foods is more common than a bee sting, but there you go. So scene size up. Oh, wow, that's uh, that's spooky. Okay, so scene safety is always important. Um, even if you're not allergic to bees, I don't want to be going into a bee uh, apiary. I don't want to go into an apiary to save someone having anaphylactic reaction and myself get stung by a million bees. All right, so just make sure you're safe. Uh, make sure they're because some people may uh, do their own EpiPen and so there might be exposed needles and things like that. So just um, ensure scene safety. Primary assessment, as with everyone, whoa, oh boy, that is a big tongue. All right, so that's angioedema. And can you can you see how this could be an airway uh, an airway emergency? Yeah, that that is a that that is get someone to the hospital very quickly so they can do a cricothyrotomy. All right, so airway, you might hear strider. That's from that upper airway angioedema, hoarseness. They may have bronchoconstriction. Histamine in the airways causes wheezing. So similar to asthma, circulation, uh, rapid weak pulse because of the uh, hypotension, urticaria means um, hives, pruritus is a medical word for itching, edema, and then warm red flesh skin from the distributive shock from the histamine. Secondary, expose the patient. Some people may only have hives on their trunk and you won't see it if you look on their extremities. So lift up their shirts, look all over. You have to do that, all right? Always do a sample, always do a physical, expose the patient, always get vitals. Uh, secondary questions to ask, do they have any drug allergies? And how I, I always ask, seasonal drug food is kind of how I, just to make sure I capture all my allergies. Um, you can also say to like bees, environmental things, but uh, if you ask, do you have environmental allergies? Patients won't know what you're, you're talking about. Do you, know, do you know what they were exposed to? How quickly did the reaction occur? Has it ever happened before? Did they need to go to the hospital? Have they ever used an EpiPen before? Did they ha require an ICU stay or a surgery, like a surgical airway from their allergic reaction? Have they used an EpiPen when you were coming to uh, respond to their emergency? Um, some suggestive vital signs, they'll be in a distributive shock. So that's hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, flushed, sweaty skin, that's distributive shock. Refresh yourself on the types of shock. They may be hypoxic from airway swelling and the shock state. Pupils will be normal. This is this is high yield, high yield. What defines anaphylaxis is two or more body systems involved in the allergic reaction. All right, if you just have hives and nothing else, you are not anaphylactic, you do not need an EpiPen. All right, and EMS, anaphylaxis, two or more body systems, one of which should include the respiratory system. All right, but that is not 100%. So here are the, the body systems that can have an allergic reaction um, manifestation. Skin, look at the skin. Do you see bites? Maybe they got bit by a tick and they can have a reaction to the tick. And bee sting, do you see hives? Do you see swelling, warmth, redness? Listen to the lungs. Don't forget to listen. You might hear wheezing. They might have cough, shortness of breath, shock state, shock, fainting, syncope, dizziness. This is high yield. I mean, uh, people frequently forget the GI tract, but imagine um, that swelling in duration like you were seeing for urticaria happens in the GI tract that manifests with uh, nausea, stomach pain or cramps, vomiting and diarrhea. Now this is important because students frequently uh, don't consider the GI tract as a a site of allergic reaction, especially if you were like stung by a bee and they feel nauseous. You're like, oh, that's just something else. No, if so someone can have an allergic manifestation in their GI tract from something uh, exposed from like a sting or something like that. So. Um, multi-system involvement is key. Neuro, if they have a sense of impending doom, anxiety, uh, believe them. So emergency medical care. Uh, airway is important, especially if they're having angioedema in the mouth and throat. You need ALS there, like immediately, because you can't do an OPA to fix to fix that, and NPA is not going to fix that. If they're swollen, you can't do a king. They may need a surgical airway. So if they have signs of angioedema, consider ALS. Suction if they have secretions. Oxygen if they're hypoxic. Ventilate as necessary if their breathing is ineffective. You hear um, wheezing, consider albuterol. The administer epi 
um, you rem we'll teach you how to draw up epi as an ampule because I showed you that uh, ampule video. But frequently in EMS, you'll either see that or an EpiPen. So you can do an EpiPen injector, which I'll show you a video of, and then ALS. Um, even though if they don't have airway needs, they may need steroids. They may need more epi. You can get epi through an IV if, they're in, if their reaction is so bad. And so um, if you give epi, you should consider ALS as well. I'm trying to figure out what's going on back here. All right, after epi. Epi is the life-saving medicine. So how epi works is alpha-1. So if all the vessels dilate, alpha-1s constrict. So that can save your blood pressure. The classic triad of drugs you'll give in anaphylaxis is epi, albuterol, and benadryl, in that order. Because epi saves lives, albuterol saves breathing, diphenhydramine is PO, so it takes a long time to come to effect, and so it probably won't show any effects until they get to the hospital. All right, so that makes sense, right? We save a blood pressure and then we have to help with the breathing in that order. All right, diphenhydramine first um, will take, if you did that first, you're not doing the EpiPen that could save their life. All right, so Epi first, then albuterol, then diphenhydramine, if it's anaphylaxis. If it's a simple allergic reaction, diphenhydramine, if it's kind of itchy urticaria, if they're having wheezing and they have a prescription, consider albuterol. If they don't have a prescription but they're itchy and having wheezing, that could be anaphylaxis. You may need to give an EpiPen. All right, so um, look for that multi-system involvement and um, consider uh, these three drugs. So albuterol, if they're wheezing, they have a prescription. You can also call medical control if they don't have a prescription. Diphenhydramine, remember your 50 milligrams PO. Do you remember the dose for peds? Here's a peds. One mg per kg. All right, and here's a picture of uh, Benadryl, which is diphenhydramine. This comes first. So this is an example of an adult and a peds EpiPen. Do you remember your dose for Epi? It should be 0.3 for adults, um, 0.15 for peds and geriatrics, over 50. All right. Then you reassess. These were critical patients. You should do every five minutes, maybe even sooner than that. Reassess the severity of the reaction. So remember, three components, primary, Interventions, vitals. Repeat primary, interventions, and vitals. You may need to give repeat epidoses. That's a bad day when you need to give repeat epidoses. You may or may not need to contact medical control. So if they're still hypotensive, you may need to give more epi, or if they start getting worse. So the auto-injector, I mentioned it's a sympathomimetic. That means it acts on adrenergic receptors, the alpha-1, beta-1, beta-2s. It is rapid, especially given in an auto-injector, so an intramuscular. It lasts about 20 minutes, and so it may wean off if it's bad enough. Here's the dose, adult peds, and then also tells you the weight-based dose for peds. But if that kid weighs 16 kilos, the max is 0.15, so make sure you understand the concept of that. If a kid weighs 20 kilos, 40 pounds, that would be 20 mg per kg, that would be uh, 0.20 MIGs, but the max dose is 0.15. So you do 0.01 MIGs per kg up to 15, 0.15, and then you just do 15. And then repeat if you need to. Criteria for administration. Moderate to severe reactions, including respiratory distress and shock. So someone has a moderate to severe anaphylaxis reaction that includes the respiratory system and hypotension, give epi. That, that's, that holds true for um, repeat doses. If they're still having breathing problems and they're shocky or they, they get better after an epi dose and then they start getting worse You know, 20 minutes later, you can give epi again. You may need to call. Um, you check your protocol if you need to call medical control for that, but you should be en route to the hospital anyway. So side effects, um, I don't know if I would call them side effects. They are just effects. Side effects to me says like, oh, it's unexpected or we don't want it to happen. Um, but epi would increase your heart rate. It, that's expected, right? Pale skin because we have a little bit of vasoconstriction. So that could be a side effect. Uh, dizziness because of the tachycardia. Maybe some chest pain from the tachycardia. Headache from a maybe slightly decreased perfusion uh, nausea, vomiting. Hopefully, that should be getting better with that. Be but you know when you're anxious, fight or flight. That's kind of what you feel, right? And then excitability and anxiety. 
talk about that later. Let's do a let's do a critical thinking scenario. This was a short lecture. Thirty eight year old female, obvious respiratory distress. She has strider. Strider's always bad. On inhalation, she's gasping. She has hives all over. Not no not good. Her tongue's swollen. Husband says she has problems when she was taking uh, medicine for dental work. So maybe she has anaphylaxis to that pain medicine. So sample, she has no known allergies. She has no meds, no history. She just got some dental work. She's alert. She's wheezing in all fields. Pedal pulses are not palpable. If you can't feel pedal pulses, go to the radial pulses. If you can't feel radial, go to the carotids. If she can't feel carotids, maybe she's uh, dead, so you do CPR. But she probably has pulses somewhere because um, she's alert. Uh, 15 minutes ago, she started taking the pain medicine and had this sensation. She was sitting in the recliner, and then her sud symptoms suddenly appeared. Here's her vital signs. Do you like that blood pressure? I do not like that blood pressure. Uh, she doesn't have... She has a... She's tachycardia. She's tachycardic. She's weak, uh, with a weak pulse from the hypotension. She's tachypnic. Her skin's flushed. She's hypoxic. So... What's causing the airway compromise? It's the allergic reaction angioedema. Um, what's causing the distress? Probably the bronchoconstriction on top of the angioedema. How would you manage airway and ventilation? Supplemental oxygen, she's hypoxic. You may need to ventilate her because um, she's tachypnic, but she may not tolerate a BVM, so you do a uh, non rebreather you may need to do a, an adjunct, such as NPA. She's alert. You can't do an OPH off a gag reflex. Why does she have a low blood pressure? The histamine, vasodilation, and what emergency care? That would be the EpiPen. Consider she had wheezing, so do albuterol and then do uh, Benadryl. What criteria do you need to determine epi? She has multi-organ system. She has hives. She has respiratory depression. She's shocky. That's epi. Side effects, uh, headache, anxiety, chest pain, tachycardia, but the the benefits far outweigh the risks. So she could, she could likely die without epi. What type of reaction? Mm. So this is good. I'm not really sure. So it it, this might be anaphylactoid. Maybe the opiate medicine, the pain medicine, caused the reaction because she wasn't sensitized before. It is impossible to tell. And it's not like super relevant, and it's not super clinically meaningful, especially in EMS, to determine anaphylactoid from anaphylactic. She's just she's had a reaction to a medicine. We need to fix that with epi. That's pretty much it. But this is like an academic, like, oh, what do you, what do you think? All right. Great. Visit Brady Books. No one ever does. Okay. Let's see if we have some videos we do. Allergic rhinitis occurs when people who are allergic to airborne particles of dust, dander, or the pollens of certain seasonal plants have been exposed to these substances. Symptoms include coughing, headache, sneezing, and itching nose, mouth, and eyes. When an allergen is inhaled by a person with a sensitized immune system, it triggers antibody production. These antibodies bind to cells that contain histamine. When the antibodies are stimulated by pollen and dust, histamines are released. This causes itching, swelling, and mucus production. Symptoms vary in severity from person to person. Very sensitive individuals can experience hives or other rashes. Heredity and environmental exposures may contribute to a predisposition to allergies. The history of the person's symptoms is important in diagnosing allergic rhinitis, including whether the symptoms vary according to time of day or the season exposure to pets or other allergens, Good and cat. diet changes. Not her. Allergy testing may reveal the specific allergens the person is reacting to. Skin testing, the most common method, includes intradermal scratch patch tests. The goal of treatment is to reduce allergy symptoms caused by the inflammation of affected tissues. The best treatment is to avoid what causes allergic symptoms in the first place, or to take steps to reduce exposure to allergens. 
Medications include over-the-counter and prescription antihistamines, nasal corticosteroid sprays, and decongestants. Allergy shots, also known as immunotherapy, are occasionally recommended if the allergen cannot be avoided and if symptoms are hard to control. Alright, let's do the EpiPen. The immune system reacts no. to any foreign substance. Allergic reaction or anaphylactic shock occurs That's when this right, response is exaggerated. Right. Some symptoms of anaphylactic shock can include hives, flushing, facial swelling, itchy watery eyes, runny nose, and rapid breathing. Exposure to an allergen causes dilation of blood vessels, increases heart rate, and decreases blood pressure. Swelling of tissues lining the respiratory system can obstruct the airway, leading to respiratory failure. The presence of either respiratory distress or symptoms of shock indicates anaphylaxis. Because severe allergic reactions can quickly become life-threatening, epinephrine must be administered quickly. Make sure the injector is prescribed to the patient and the liquid is clear. Press the injector firmly against the thigh until the entire dose is injected. Epinephrine will significantly increase the heart's workload, constrict blood vessels, and relax the airway. In two minutes, expect some relief of symptoms and an increase in the pulse. Alright, I'll catch you all next time.